Hey, this is Ramon, channel is Alpha 4. So first thing we're going to do today is we're going to read from the Little Rock uh, Study Bible and we are going to compare it against the Art Scroll Study Bible, which is not really a study Bible, but it has the same notes in the bottom. And I'm going to be comparing it to different study Bibles all the way through. Ten part series because there's two intro videos. Anyway, so we are going to begin with Exodus 1. Yes, I'm going to be looking down in this video. Nothing I can do about that. Okay, so first off, let me show you the intro page. So this is what the intro page looks like. Okay, that's the intro to Exodus from the Little Rock Study Bible. Let's go with lines with verses 1 through 14. These are the names of the sons of Israel, who accompanied by their households, entered into Egypt with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The total number of Jacob's direct descendants was 70. Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and that whole generation died. But the Israelites were fruitful and prolific. They multiplied and became so very numerous that the land was filled with them. Then a new king, who knew nothing of Joseph, rose to power in Egypt. He said to his people, See, the Israelite people have multiplied and become more numerous than we are. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them to stop their increase. Otherwise, in time of war, they too may join our enemies to fight against us and so leave the land. Accordingly, they set supervisors over the Israelites to oppress them with forced labor. Thus, they had to build for Pharaoh the garrison cities of Pithom and Ramses. Yet, the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians began to loathe the Israelites. So the Egyptians reduced the Israelites to cruel slavery, making life bitter for them with hard labor, at mortar and brick, and all kinds of field work, cruelly oppressed in all their labors. All right, now let's read the notes from 1 through 14. Note 1-1, one, one, the sons of Israel. Here, literally the first generation sons of Jacob, Israel. However, beginning with verse 7, the same Hebrew phrase refers to Jacob's more remote descendants. Hence, from there on, it is ordinarily rendered the Israelites. Households, the family in its fullest sense, including wives, children, and servants. Note 1-2, Jacob's sons are listed here according to their respective mothers. Note 1-5, direct descendants, literally persons coming from Jacob's loins. Hence, wives of Jacob's sons and servants are not included. See Genesis 46, 26. 70. Genesis 46, 26, along with the Septuagint for the verse, agrees on the total of 66 coming down to Egypt with Jacob. But in verse 27, the Hebrew adds the two sons born to Joseph in Egypt and presupposes Jacob himself and Joseph for a total of 70. The Septuagint adds nine sons born to Joseph to get a total of 75. This is the figure from the Septuagint and 4QEX have here in Exodus 1.5. Note 1 7. Faithful multiplied. The land was filled with them. The language used here to indicate the, the fecundity of the Israelite population echoes the divine blessing bestowed upon humanity at creation and after the flood, as well as suggesting fulfillment of the promises to the ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Note 1 8 who knew nothing of Joseph. The nuance intended by the Hebrew verb know here goes beyond precise determination. 
the idea may not be simply that a new king came to power who had not heard of Joseph, but that this king ignored the services that Joseph had rendered to Egypt, repudiating the special relationship that existed between Joseph and his predecessor on the throne. Note 110. Increase. Pharaoh's actions thereby immediately pit him against God's will for the Israelites to multiply. Note 111. Pharaoh, not a personal name, but the title common to all the kings of Egypt. Note 114. Mortar. Either the wet clay with which the bricks were made, as in Nahum, or the cement used between the bricks in building, as in Genesis. Now, let's check out the same from the art scroll. Exodus 1. Okay, here's the intro to Exodus from the art scroll. You can see that here. All right. Then, let's see the difference. So we're going to 14. And these are the names of the children of Israel who were coming to Egypt with Jacob, each man and his household came, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the persons who emerged from Jacob's loins were seventy souls, and Joseph was in Egypt. Joseph died, and all his brothers, and that entire generation, the children of Israel, were fruitful, teemed, increased, and became strong, very, very much so. And the land became filled with them. A new king arose over Egypt, who did not know of Joseph. He said to his people, Behold, the people, the children of Israel, are more numerous and stronger than we. Come, let us outsmart it, lest it become numerous, and it may be that if a war will occur, it too may join our enemies and rage war against us and go up from the land. So they appointed taskmasters over it in order to afflict it with their burdens. It built storage cities for Pharaoh, Pithom, and Ramses. But as much as they would afflict it, so it would increase and so it would spread out. And they became disgusted because of the children of Israel. Egypt enslaved the children of Israel with crushing harshness. They embittered their lives with hard work, with mortar, and with bricks, and with every labor of the field, all their labors that they performed with them were with crushing harshness. And now the notes for 1 through 14. Note 1 1. The book of Exodus begins with the conjunction, and in order to relate it to the conclusion of Genesis, there Jacob's family begins the process of exile by descending to Egypt. And here the narrative of the exile is developed. There Jacob's family begins the process of exile by descending to Egypt. And here, the narrative of the exile is developed until it ends with the blaze of miracles that accumulated in the Exodus and the giving of the Torah at Sinai. Note 1, 8 through 14. The Egyptians were frightened by Israel's growth. They might overwhelm the natives, but they were also too useful to be permitted to leave the country. It was the first instance in history of what has become the familiar pattern of anti-Semitism. The Jews are too dangerous to keep, and they are too important to lose. So Pharaoh proposes a solution. He will harness the Jews by enslaving them so that the state will benefit from their talents without fear that they will desert the country. All right, so we just compared the Little Rock Catholic Study Bible to the Art Scroll 
and its study material, its notes. As you can see, the wording in the language is slightly different. For one thing, the Hebrew pronunciation of names is different. For another thing, the way the words come across in the Hebrew is slightly more literal, while from the English, it is slightly more metaphorical. So that's an interesting note and something that Protestants usually pick up on when they're trying to understand the Old Testament. That being said, that does not negate the understanding of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church Church's understanding of the Old Testament is very much in line with the Jewish understanding of the Old Testament. Differences obviously being the reading in of Jesus. But that's a different story for a different day. As you can see, these two Bibles and these two translations, the NAB and the Art Scroll Tanakh, are similar, but not quite the same. And the idea that you get from one, that of the Catholic, of the NAB, is that of a story. While the one that you get from the Art Scroll Tanakh is that of an experience. But you put those two together and you get a very nice narrative. And you get a fuller idea of what was happening. Also, very interesting, the notes reflect a different perspective. While the Catholic is more dry, in point of fact, the rabbinic notes are much more personal and emotive. You can feel the weight of the words in the notes in the art scroll. One is coming from looking at it from an outside perspective as part of our collective history. The other is looking at it as part of their personal history, individual history, their family history. And it's just a slight, it's a slight change in the perspective, but it's enough of a change that it comes across even when reading just a sample page to compare the two. So my review so far of the Little Rock Study Bible is that the NAB translation holds true, while the Art Scroll translation is a little bit better narratively or performance wise the flow of the art scroll has a little bit more oomph to it but the accuracy is roughly the same while the notes the notes in the catholic study though factual are slightly distant from the material it is very scholarly while the notes of the art scroll are more personal and more evocative anyway that's my first initial review of the Little Rock Catholic Study Bible. And I will say this, there are more coming. The next one that I will be going to will be the Jewish Publication Society's Oxford's The Jewish Study Bible. That's a mouthful. Anyway, that's coming up next. And we will be doing Joshua 1 verses 1 through 10 with notes 1 through 9. I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you guys are watching. I'm filming this long before I'm doing the editing for it. So I hope this series has taken off and you guys are enjoying this. Peace, like, subscribe, comment down below, make a reply video. I hope you're enjoying this. I love you all. Peace.